I'm here for it. For it. Not a word. Uh, just started. All right. Hey guys, so I have another Q and A for you guys. Uh, I just said you guys again. <laughs> Hey guys, so I have another Q&A. Um, I called for more questions on Instagram, so I'm scrolling through here. I said that I would answer like 10 to 15 of them, depending um, on how much time I feel like it's passing by. So, uh, I got quite a few questions, and let's just get started. The first question comes from Mers, and she asks, I want to start a YouTube channel, but I'm afraid of putting myself out there. What would you suggest for someone like me? So I wanted to address this question in particular uh, because I get it actually fairly often. So first of all, I have a video uh, solely for people who are like YouTube newbies and want to start a channel. I have a video for that already. But the reason I wanted to address this is because I think it applies to not just YouTube, but things that you're not sure about doing, but you really want to. Honestly, if it's something that you truly want, like you really, you know for sure that it's something that you would like to try, that you would like to pursue, or what have you, uh, just do it. <laughs> I, I know that's hard, like myself in particular, uh, I have a very difficult time doing that sort of thing, but there's nothing else you can do but do it. You either do it or you don't. If you don't, then you're going to regret it if you never try whatever it is that you would like to try. So that's all I can really say about it. Um, YouTube in particular... It, it's tough in the beginning, I think, because, you, I mean, you don't have any followers, <laughs> you know, you, your videos might get, like, one or two views, which is exciting, but then you're like, wait, that's literally one person, it was probably me. But just give it time, it takes a while to build up an audience if you don't have connections. I had zero connections, so for, like, the, even the first couple of years I had my channel, my, my beauty channel, um, I didn't have very many subscribers, and it, that was kind of okay with me, I wasn't expecting to grow that much, um, it just kind of built built itself up um, as time went on, so just be patient and keep going if you really like it, and yeah. Sarah Nadings asks, what question or questions do you love to answer and what's your simplest pleasure? So the first thing, um, I honestly, I don't know if I necessarily love to answer them, but I just really like when I get questions that I can tell that people have watched my videos in the past, like the last stuff that um, applies to things I've said before, which I think is nice. It shows like some sort of connection that they've actually um, paid attention <laughs> to what I've said. I get a lot of questions that I've answered before, so whenever I get those, I'm just like, and what's your simplest pleasure? Uh, I would, honestly, it's sleep. Sleep and having no stress because. For anyone who knows me or has, has been even following me on like Twitter and Instagram for the past 10 weeks knows that I have been so freaking stressed out with school um, to the point that I was getting sick, like literally physically sick due to anxiety and stress. And that's not, not good at all. So um, now that that's all over with, uh, for those of you who don't know, I took my last final yesterday. And I'm so relieved because I just looked at my grade. I literally thought I failed it. I was like, oh my god, I'm not going to pass this class. And I'm going to have to take it again. And I'm never going to graduate college. Um, I actually got an 83 on final, which I was not expecting. I'm feeling really happy right now. So yeah, so my simplest pleasure is sleeping, which I got to do this morning for the first time ever. I didn't have to set any alarms. I didn't have to worry about an exam or anything. Um, I got to sleep. It was nice. And, well, granted, I did like wake up at 6 in the morning, which is really irritating. I was like, no, Katie you can sleep today and then I woke up again at 8 and I was just like <sighs> anyway that's beside the point sleep and lack of stress awesome why are my ears plugged like I, I'm not changing elevation here what's happening <laughs> okay C Anders 906 asks besides Talarina what are some of your fa other favorite foods see this is like exactly what I'm talking about like he knows that that's my favorite food I've said it in like three different videos and people continuously ask me what my favorite food is I'm like y'all need to watch my other videos but um I really enjoy Japanese food as I said before but specifically udon if you're not familiar with Japanese like noodle dishes I'm sure all of you have had ramen at some point in time but there's also udon so men, um, soba, there's just a lot of different ones, but udon is like, they're like fatter noodles. It's usually served hot, and I could eat it, even if it was like 100 degrees outside, I could eat it. Like, I love it so much. Whenever we go to Japanese restaurants, I can guarantee you that there's like a 90% chance that that's what I'm going to order. So, uh, I just really like it. Okay. Yuki, Yukio, Yuki, I think that's how you pronounce it, <laughs> asks, did you mention you were a driller back in high school? Tell us about it. 
Yes, so in my Throwback Thursday videos, which I haven't done one in a while, I need to get to my junior year one, I mentioned a lot about, or talked a lot about dance and my dance experiences. Uh, I actually did do drill team as well. Um, I did it for the full year, starting my sophomore year of high school. Then I only did second semester, which is when the dance competitions take place, um, my junior and senior years. Because the first half of the, sem the year, this first semester, is all about um, doing the band performances, so like on the field with the band, um, and all those competitions, and I didn't do that junior and senior years. So I did it sophomore year though, um, for the full year, and it was, it was fun, but I was so overwhelmed my sophomore year because I did drill team, which started zero period, and then we had night practices with the band, and it was just like a lot of stuff. Plus that was my first year on advanced dance, which was also a new commitment for me. Plus sophomore year is when grades actually start to count, it's just like... <laughs> I just, I wasn't really expecting all of that stuff. So, I liked Drill Team. I was definitely a more dance based, um, but Drill Team was fun. It was very different dynamic compared to, uh, compared to dance. I really liked competing, but I also liked the creative aspect of being on dance where I got to choreograph and stuff. Drill Team was more about the competition and perfecting certain routines, performing them over and over and over again, and I think competing is fun, but there's just a lot of pressure. I remember my senior year, my senior year on drill team, uh, I had a solo, like, in our, uh, I think it was medium dance routine, and I was someone, like, people don't expect me to mess up, because I, I don't really mess up that often, but at nationals, uh, I effed up this one part, not my solo, but the literally immediately after my solo, I messed up. I was just like so, like, no, it was terrible. And I was just like, ugh, all the regrets. Anyway, that's Drill Team. Chantel with a four asks, yay, if you could meet any famous person, whether they are deceased or living, who would it be? And if you could only shop at one clothing store for the next four months, which would you pick? Honestly, I think I would pick... Ellen DeGeneres because I think she's hilarious and I think she's just so nice. I think she honestly makes the world a better place. That may sound a little bit dramatic but I actually think it's true. Um, but besides Ellen, I would really like to meet Michael Vartan because he's just so pretty. Someone else asked, I think, um, who's my ultimate celebrity crush. I've never really had one and I, I wouldn't say Michael Vartan is my ultimate celebrity crush but I just think he is a very good looking man and I've been watching Alias again on Netflix and he is just like oh, Agent Michael Vaughn you are a very dreamy man so yeah I'm just a little bit obsessed with him my mom texted me to tell me that he was getting divorced and I was like oh my god this is my chance plus I know that he met his well now his soon to be ex-wife at Whole Foods I'm like no nope, gotta start shopping at Whole Foods so I'm not obsessive or anything it's I'm joking. <laughs> Maybe. And also, if you can only shop at one clothing store, um, for the next four months, it's such a random number, but I would pick Forever 21, to be honest. I shop there all the time. I always find something that I like. I could definitely make any kind of outfit that I wish from the stuff there, and I, and let's be honest, it's, it's affordable, and it's I like it. Let's be real. It's kind of sad that I'm now 22 and will never, ever be Forever 21 again. Not that you can be. But okay. Rika's Chica's asks, if you were to live alone or on some desert island, would you manage to survive? I mean, without any hygiene products, no people to talk to, and no gadgets. <laughs> no. If I was alone, I don't think the hygiene thing, as far as like my face and stuff goes, would be a huge problem. No way. See, mm, I don't know. I think makeup wouldn't be an issue. I would miss it, but it wouldn't be like, oh, I need to do my face. But I think like, being able to shave my legs and stuff and like wash my hair, that would be an issue for me. Having no people to talk to, I, you know, I think for a time I would be fine. Actually for quite a while I would be fine, but then I think it depends on how long I was out there. Like if it was a really long time, I might, you know, start talking to a volleyball. Well then. <laughs> Okay. Priscilla Wu 643 asks, do you plan on another career besides YouTube in the future? And I wanted to address this because 
I think it's a very interesting question in that I don't consider YouTube my career. <laughs> um, and I don't plan on it being my career. It would be really awesome if I could depend on YouTube as a career, but at this point in my life, there's no way in heck that I could do that. I just, uh, there's no way I could support myself on YouTube alone. Do I plan on something? Yes. Do I know what it is? No. Um, as you guys know, I am a psych major. I am taking my last qu quest. <laughs> I'm taking my last quest. No, class. Um, right now, actually at a community college around here, it's Spanish. It's my last class that I need to graduate. I've already done all my psych requirements already. Um, but do I plan on using psych? I would like to, yeah. I'm, I think I've mentioned before that I like the idea of being either um, a career counselor or a college counselor of some sort. I haven't really looked into it to be honest. I really have no idea. There are just so many different things that I enjoy. Um, YouTube being one of them, if I could pursue it, really, I would like to do that. But it's just, it's kind of hard. I don't have any connections. Like, I just don't know any, like, famous YouTubers or anything, so. It's just, it's different. I can't depend on it and plan on YouTube being a career. I don't think anyone can, to be honest. Unless you're already, like, famous. Okay. Do you need... <laughs> Sorry if I butchered that. What languages do you speak? Are you Japanese? Or I apologize, and please correct me if I'm wrong, or I'm... Oh, I see. You correct. got it. Also, what's your advice on making a relationship last? I like how she corrected herself in another comment saying, Sorry for the typos. I know you're pretty anal about them. You, you go. I am Japanese. You're correct. Uh, and I speak English. <laughs> I don't speak any Japanese. I get that question a lot. But the only language that I can understand and speak very basically in is Spanish, um, which I think is pretty common, so. Then my advice on making a relationship last. So my last relationship was last year and it was very, very short lived. And but and I've had some experiences since then and before that that um, I I feel like I have enough to say that I can tell you um, what not to do. I think what's necessary is trust and honesty, as I'm sure you could all expect, but something that I think people don't keep in mind is that I think you have to have common and connected relationship goals. Like, you can't... I think everyone needs to be on the same page, and I, I think communication is so important. These are pretty basic things, but they're things that you really, really need to keep in mind in order to make a relationship last. Like, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to last if you're not wanting the same things, if you don't have things to talk about and share with each other and that sort of thing. But honestly, if you, you can't start a relationship if there's no trust. And I have learned from my experiences that um, once trust is broken, it's really, really difficult to ever build up again if you can. Trust, guys. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Endless Cheer asks, Hey Katie, I just started college and I wanted to know, would you normally be the first one to initiate conversation with a guy? If so, what would you say? I'm pretty shy, so I really don't know how to guys in general. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's a typo or if you literally meant you really don't know how to guys, because that's kind of funny if that's intentional. Anyway, uh, no, I don't initiate conversation with anyone really. Um, I'm very introverted in class, outside of class, I kind of keep to myself, I don't really feel the need to speak to anyone unless spoken to type of thing. What would you say? What would I say? <laughs> Hey, what's up? What's crack of that game? <laughs> I don't think I think that was really weird, never mind. Honestly, like if you're in class, I would probably say something about class, like what's going on, like you can ask him a question about lecture or something. <laughs> I don't know. See, they always approach me or they always talk to me first, so like I never really have to deal with starting things up, so <laughs> I honestly don't know. Um I feel like, you know, just small talk is good, I guess. I don't like small talk, but that's a nice in, um, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna stop because this is not helpful. <laughs> Maggie M underscore LP asks, what would you choose if you could not paint your nails or could not wear makeup? Um, I would not paint my nails. I know, I feel like I would be an entirely different person without my nails done. Granted, that's because everyone always comments on my nails on like every single video. But um, I would definitely prefer to wear makeup just because this is, my, this is my thing. So I would definitely miss it. That would suck if I couldn't. But, I mean, if I had to pick, I would rather not wear my nail polish. Nail polish. Okay. Alright, so I'll answer a couple more questions. Um, Emma Kathleen 11 asks, what's your MBTI personality type? 
Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's Myers-Briggs type indicator? <laughs> What's, I don't know the TI, I think that's what the TI stands for, something like that. Basically, it's a personality test. Um, and mine is very inconsistent, actually. This is why I don't really like to talk about it. I think I have before, but um, I'm always introverted, so I versus E. And I'm usually, most of the time, a J, uh, judging versus perception, I believe, so J or P at the end. And in the middle, it's really up in the air. So it's either, I'm usually ISFJ, I think, but you, usually the description of that one doesn't even fit me, and I'm always kind of on the edge uh, between the two middle letters. So the S is sensing versus N, which is intuition, I believe. And then F is feeling versus thinking, and that's the one. That one's very, very up in the air for me. So I don't know. I guess that means I'm, I'm very indecisive, and my personality is not very consistent. Cool. Okay. Last question comes from Hannah13. She asks, when you first began college, were you nervous? So I want to address this because I know a lot of you guys are entering college and coming here for help with college and advice about college and stuff like that. I just want to let you guys know that college, it may be intimidating at first, but you'll get used to it really quickly. Um, and you may be nervous about making friends and um, going to class and passing your classes and dealing with midterms and finals and papers and all that kind of stuff. But um, like I said, it becomes uh, very routine after a while, and I don't think you have to worry about it. You'll find your place, I think, within a short amount of time. And even if you don't, I think you'll find it eventually. There are a lot of great people that you're going to meet in college. Um, you'll definitely learn some things from some not-so-great people. I think you'll understand um, that there are a lot of different, uh, I guess, ways people were raised, and so you'll kind of see those different types of personalities and stuff like that. I think it's really interesting to be honest, but don't be nervous. I wasn't really nervous. I was just kind of mad about the whole thing. I'm still kind of mad about it anyway, um, but it's it's nice. College is, is interesting, so I don't know if that was encouraging at all, but you'll be fine. You guys will all be fine. Before I leave though, I had one last question that was actually asked on my last round of questions, but I wanted to answer it because I, it was literally like my favorite question ever. Um, Shay... Kunu Kolu, sorry if that's not how you pronounce that, um, asked, what will you name your Persian cat? First of all, I thought this was great because he, I think it's, is it he? It might be she. I think it's he. Because um, he knew that I was getting a Persian cat. Well, okay, not that I'm getting one. That I want one in the future, which is great because I just love that. But also, I picked a name. I'm going to name him Reginald. <laughs> uh, I feel like Persian cats just look so prissy. So I want to get a, a dude cat, and I'm going to name him Reginald, <laughs> and it's not, I don't think I'm even going to call him Reggie, that seems like too common, I think I'm actually going to call him Reginald, I think I have to say it, his name like with a prissy attitude, like Reginald. <laughs> uh, see, I'm not going to be a cat lady, I'm going to be that weird girl who has a cat named Reginald and talks to him with an accent. <laughs> okay, I think it's a great place to stop for today. <laughs> Alright, so that's all I have to say for today. I hope you guys liked it, and I will do this again at some point in time. I really enjoy this, actually. I like hearing what you guys are curious about. Um, but, yeah, so, okay. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!